Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. Starting today, we will learn all about Angular services. What are services? Why are they important? We'll also learn some important fundamental concepts like dependency injection. We'll learn about a decorator called injectable. We will learn about HTTP client. Eventually, in the next episode onwards, you will learn about HTTP GET, POST, PUT, DELETE methods, which forms the basis of your interaction between the backend API and the frontend Angular application. At the end of this particular mini series on services, you will be able to master Angular um, feature of how do you work with the backend APIs, how do you integrate them in your application, and much, much more. Let's get started. This is part 72 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial series. Uh, I have planned more than 100 tutorials. We have reached 72 and we are covering almost all aspects of Angular framework, uh, including a lot of detailed use cases. So make sure that you check out the playlist link, which is in the description box below. And if you have any doubts, as always, I welcome you to ask me in the comment section. I try and help you as much as I can. Following are the topics that I've already covered in detail. So take a look at it. Uh, if you have any doubt in any of these topics, feel free to reach out as well. The following uh, topics that I've covered so far 71 uh, are covered in detail with a lot of detailed use cases. You don't want to miss on them. So make sure that you go through it well. Today we are learning about Angular services. So before I start explaining you about the Angular services, let me touch base upon a very, very important topic called dependency injection. So what is dependency injection, right? Uh, a lot of times this is asked in interviews as well. So make sure that you understand the concept really well. So what is dependency injection? It's an important application design pattern, right? It's a design pattern. And what it does is that it allows us the ability to add the functionality of components at runtime. So you want to provide something like a service, etc., at runtime. So these are done when you are compiling them. So the dependencies are provided at runtime rather than at the compilation. Now that being said, the DI framework lets you supply data to a component from an injectable service like class. Now Angular has its own DI framework internally which is typically used in the design of Angular applications to increase the efficiency and modularity. Now, what are the types of dependencies we have? So dependencies are like something like you can explain, which is services or object of a particular class, right? That is also provided at runtime. So those are the two examples that you should give if you want to talk about dependencies for a components or Angular application. Now, DI is also a coding pattern in which a class will ask for dependencies from external sources then rather than creating themselves, right? So this is just a, a quick intro topic for you. It's not if you will ask me, are we using them on a day to day basis? No, we don't actually. But internally, Angular framework does use it. So it's important. It's healthy to always know what's happening under the hood. Now, that being said, let's jump into Angular services. So what are what are Angular services? Now services allows us to create reusable common shared functionality between various modules and components. Think of them like something that if you need certain functionality, certain code, certain functionality to be reused, you put it under service. Also, services are singleton, which means they have only single instance. Services are injected into application using dependency injection mechanism. That's what we just described some time back. We need to create and inject services in components where we want to use them. All right. Services are an abstraction layer or process layer, which consists of our applications business logic. Services are mainly used to commonly used for making HTTP requests to our endpoints or APIs. So for example, Whenever you have your backend APIs, you want to communicate with them, with the application, which is front-end application, we will use services. Angular has a wide variety of solid support, um, like for interaction with the backend APIs. 
So we will learn all about it now. A service can have a value, method, or a combination of both. Right. So this is just a brief introduction so that you know that some theoretical knowledge about what angular services are. Some of these questions are often asked in interviews. So make sure that you understand and follow them correctly. Think of this example. Let's say you have multiple modules or components. Now you can use and all of these components. Let's say they share similar functionality, right? They need same data instead of having a definition defined in each of the component or module level, you can have commonly placed in one place. It's like a reusable piece of code, which is called service. Then serve the same service can be served in different components. Now that was about service, right? So now let's see how do we generate a service? So let's see that here. Alrighty, if you want, let me also make some notes for you real quick. So some of the th important things that you need to remember, what are services? Mention that um, services are the um, are reusable, reusable common shared functionality between different modules and components. OK, this is what you should answer. And then you should specify that services are injected using the DI mechanism or design pattern, which is dependency injection. Now, services are used for interactions with backend APIs or REST endpoints. Right. And you can say that services are one of the most crucial, critical and crucial features because without which you cannot work with backend APIs or systems, right? All right. So that is about the introduction. Now, how do we, how do we generate these services, right? Just like any other angular uh, using CLI, we will say ng generate service followed by the service name. Now, some of the common things that people often ask me are where should you keep them, right? Where should you keep the services? Some people suggest that if it's a functionality, you should keep it under similar module, should be inside the same module, should be separate, right? So these are some of the valid legit questions that I get. So the answer is in my experience at enterprise level, what I've seen is uh, usually we would have a separate um, folder, right? Now the reason for that is because you can have all the things in one place. Now take an example of this, right? So I have this folder structure. I have a lot of modules and components that we have generated over a period of time. So if I want to have services, the best practice that I've seen in different, um, I would say enterprises that I've worked with is have a separate folder called services. And this one folder will be, will be used as a common repo where you can hold all your services, right? So I navigated to that service. So create a, create a single folder to place all services. That way you know, you easily know that's a simple folder structure that you should adopt. Now, how do we generate ng generate service service name? So let's do that. I am in that folder of services. I'm saying ng generate service followed by I'm saying I want a service by the name users. All right, so it generate it will generate two files. One is the service file. One is the service spec.ts, which is the test a unit test file. So open service and you would see service.ts file, right? Now what's inside a service file? Let's quickly check that also. If you open the service file, you would see that it says injectable provided in root. Now this is a very, very important concept that you have to understand. The first thing is there is a decorator which is injectable. Okay. Now what it does, it gives information about this particular file. 
what is this file it's a injectable that means it will use the dependency injection mechanism and will be will be injected from at runtime right that means when you are running your application compiling it it would directly provide it so that's why it's a injectable now the other thing that you would see is provided in now this is very very important now you don't have to specify it anywhere because it's already saying that it is provided in the root that means it's available throughout your application wherever you inject it okay remember it's available wherever we inject it now where can we where can we inject right the services right inject any in inject in any component where you want to use it we want to use it okay so where do we so in a real time application you would have around 30 40 services in the components wherever you use it you will inject it right how do we inject it i'll show you in just a bit when we start coding right now what we have done is we have tried to understand the concept of services we have learned how to generate a service we have we are understanding what's inside a service file now that being said what is a other thing that is asked it usually in interviews is what do you understand by injectable and what do you mean by provided in oh so we already did that right so provided in means wherever we want to inject it now where can we inject it we inject it in the services should we should do we have to import it anywhere no this is yet another important question that is often asked do we need to import this services in any module file this is often asked to trick the candidates to check if they have really worked on it or not a lot of times people say yes we need to inject and that's where you know that the candidate has not really worked on it so do we need to inject the service no we don't have to make any entry in anywhere we directly import it in the component okay in any module file no we don't import in module only imported in component where it's used right so that is all about services right all right so now let's see the next one which is injectable so like i said it's a dependency injection pattern right so what it tells is that it will is coming from an external source load it inside this all right so that's the injectable decorator that we are using which allows the functionality of any class to be injected at runtime all right so we generated the service right and let's see how to call it now so we got a we got this service i'm just going to create a simple method i'm going to say get users all right i'm defining a method and i'm saying the name of the method is get users and for now i'm going to create a quick array nothing fancy just simple just for your simple understanding i'm just creating so say that whenever this method is called i expect it to return the these values fair enough and it'll return this so i saved it now how do we use this so let's say i will go to first let me check the route which one we can use because we made some changes so i see we have customers right so let's go and to our application and say customers okay customers works right so what i'm going to do go to customers customers component and here in the component.ts we will say import that particular service from we are going to say services slash user service so what are we doing we are going to import our user service in this class and since we are doing then the next step is to inject a, an instance here in constructor now usually the good practice is always make the lower case of this particular class name 
so like for example if you have user service just make it small so you know that it's of the same service right so what did I do I injected the service here and then created an instance in the constructor which is private quick user service now should it always be private no it can be public as well okay but most times you would have it private so that the data is secured it doesn't go out now once you do this user service ng on in it I'm saying this dot user service dot now you see it is showing me the method that is available in that particular service call it right now this method doesn't take any input it's not taking any input right now as of now because it's a simple use case where we have a method which is inside a service and we are just calling it it will return us the value so what I'm going to take to collect that output just do a console log or just throw it in the component for now here I will just all right so what I'm doing is I'm just throwing that output and putting it back all right uh, why is it not coming let's see that customers so this is a local instance right so what I'm going to do this dot users and create a variable and use it here define that variable and say any for now so now I'm using and printing that so you see here user ID 10 YouTube and Instagram which means that this data is now coming from the service into this component and that's the important lesson of this particular episode just to make sure that we are getting the correct data from the correct source I'm going to take this and add one more and I should expect that in my UI so I see it here that means the flow is now complete I have I was able to bind the data from the component to service and from service to component right so that is how you bind the data and you get the required information so it's from so what are the steps we did we imported the service into the component you can use it in any number of components okay there is no uh, fixed thing that you can use only in one component or two components or anything you can use it anywhere in any component you want once you have imported the service create an instance in the constructor then call the method using the instance of the service then bind data the way you want in your UI now this is not necessary so I'll not write it you can bind it in UI you can do it more logical processing in your component that depends upon your application but you get an idea that you can get the dynamic data all right so that's all uh, it is there for you to learn today in the next episode I will start you with HTTP client which is the way you talk to all the backend um, dependencies or API calls to make the rest API endpoint talk to them send data receive data etc I hope you like my work and tutorials if you do please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials stay tuned for the next episode where I will start with HTTP client and we'll start interacting with the backend APIs. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.